Let's go. All right. I always say all right when I start the podcast. I noticed that yesterday. I always say that. I always say all right. You ready? Mundeep's not here today again. Uh, he should be back tomorrow. Should be. I know I said that yesterday that he should be back here today. But he should be back tomorrow. He should be. We got a lot of football today to talk about. A lot of football. So, sit back, relax. We're going to be talking some football. So, in a bit, actually... We have the Cowboys versus the, I was about to say the Wizards. The Cowboys versus the Washington football team. You guys can hear that, can't you? I gotta close my window. People pick the best time to do work outside. But, so we got the Washington football team for, uh, versus the Cowboys. So that's happening in a bit. I think at 4.30. So while I'm doing this podcast, it's going to be going. So... Who is the best team in the NFC? Are the Cowboys the best team in the NFC East? And you know what? I have to say so. As much as I hate their fans, I'm nothing against the team. It's just their fans. I hate their fans. I want to clear the air about that again. But yeah, I, I do believe that the Cowboys are the best team in the NFC East. The Eagles are leading it. You know, a tie is more than a is worth more than a loss, which is crazy, right? So. The Cowboys, they, I think Andy Dalton can play, he's been playing pretty decent. You know, Ezekiel Elliott, he's been rushing for about 100 yards. So, they have a decent team, even though Dak Prescott's not there. So, I think, you know, uh, the Cowboys are the best team in the NFC East. It, this is pretty much a pillow fight in the NFC East. That's how weak and soft and, you know, how terrible this division is. I say it every day. It's a terrible division. So... I think, yes, the Cowboys are the best in the NFC East because, you know, the Giants are decent. The Giants are pretty decent. You know, I like what the coaches are doing. I like how the players are playing. They're not giving up. Even without Saquon Barkley, I think he's they're, they're doing a very good job right now. However, I just don't see them going, like, you know, far. Like, I don't see them getting into the playoffs. Uh, you have the, the Washington football team who's, you know, they, they're so bad they don't even have a name. <laughs> I say that every day as well. They don't even have a name. That's how bad they are. They didn't even go with, like, Washington, D.C. or something or Washington Warriors. They went with the Washington football team, which is just completely sad. So I think, you know, the Cowboys. And then also you have the Eagles. I (laughs) nearly forgot about the Eagles. Carson Wentz, he's not playing that well. However, you know, like I said, that offensive line of the Eagles is terrible. You know, and Carson Wentz doesn't have the weapons he needs to look good. That's why he's. I feel like that's why he's having a bad season. And you're gonna have to give Carson Wentz those weapons. People shouldn't be like you know just blaming Carson Wentz because he's playing bad. You gotta also take in the fact that he has a terrible offensive line. He doesn't have that that much reliable weapons. So he's playing very bad right now. And I don't think they're. They might not make it into the playoffs. It might be the Cowboys. So that I think the Cowboys are the best team in the NFC East, even though like there is really no good team in the NFC East because it's just that bad. But yeah, I do think the Cowboys are the best team because they have, I know that I said they don't even have a quarter of a team, but they do have Ezekiel Elliott. But obviously Ezekiel Elliott, he's going to like, you can't be a good uh, like, running back and you know receiver if you don't have a good quarterback right and you don't have a good running game you know Andy Dalton is pretty decent uh you know he did get hit in the head I I keep seeing that highlight where he got his helmet taken off uh when he got hit hard so I do think that you know Andy Dalton is back he's healthy and that's why he's on the field I think he's gonna help them you know will them against against the Washington football team if they somehow lose to the Washington football team that will be very very embarrassing I will laugh very hard if they lose to the Washington football team but yeah I do and I know coming from me out of all people saying that the Cowboys are the best team in the NFC East I know it's crazy but right now I, I have no other choice I'm not going to come on here and lie it's the Cowboys that are the best team in the NFC East and I think they're going to top off you know all the other teams 
and all the other garbage teams in the NFC East, and I think they're gonna end up getting a home playoff game. Uh, should Peterson have benched Carson Wentz? So should Doug Peterson have benched Carson Wentz? You know, I don't. I don't think he should have because um, Carson Wentz. Like I mentioned it in the last topic. He's he ha he's he's lacking the weapons that he needs. He's lacking the offensive line. That offensive line. Is, I'll say it multiple times. It's terrible. That offensive line is terrible. That's why he's getting sacked so many times. There was one time he got sacked about 13 times. I think he got sacked about close to 50 times this season already. And that is insane. Completely insane. Imagine getting hit that many times per week. So it's very tough. It's very tough on your body. And you need to improve that offensive line in the offseason. Because if you don't improve that offensive line, it's going to be very, very bad again next season. Carson Wentz is going to look even worse next season. And, you know, they're going to have to add some more guys onto that roster. They're going to have to tr make some trades. Because right now, and some of those guys, like I said, I don't know what's going on with that, uh, you know, training staff in Philly. But it seems like a lot of people, even on the 76ers side, people are getting hurt a lot. We saw Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, even on the Eagles side. We see what Carson Wentz, Deshaun Jackson, those guys. So I think that they they need to st they need to figure something out. They need to get their guys healthy. Make sure they're healthy throughout the season. Give them the rehab that they need. Give them the training that they need. Make sure they're healthy. Make sure they're eating properly. That goes into recovering and staying healthy. Make sure, you know, they're they're stretching as well. Stretching is a good part, you know. Make sure they're just doing the things that they need to do in order to be healthy, in order to come into the season well. I know uh, I'm getting back to Carson Wentz here. So Carson Wentz, he's, he's a good quarterback. I believe he'll come back stronger next season. He's just not having a good season right now. But this season, I, I don't think he's going to get into the playoffs because, I, like I said in the last discussion, I think the Cowboys are the best team in the NFC East. So... If you don't make the playoffs this season, that that gives you time. That gives you time to recover, get your mind in the right spot, and come back for next season. Go to Doug Peterson, even though you know Doug Peterson hesitated when he was asked about Carson Wentz in a press conference after the game. These motorcycles, man. Uh, when he hesitated, and people and the media is going making a big deal out of it now. But you gotta you gotta take in you gotta take in that. You know that that's that's a tough tough question for a, a coach to answer. You know, a lot of people said, "Oh, if he was confident in Carson Wentz, he would have answered right away." That's not necessarily the case. You're asking if he's gonna bench his starting quarterback and uh, put in a thing for for him, uh, Jalen Hurts. Sorry, I forgot his name for a second. J if you're gonna put in Jalen Hurts for him, so I I don't think he should because I think it'll be the same situation for Jalen Hurts that Carson Wentz is having. I. I think Carson Wentz is a better quarterback than Jalen Hurts. I think we all know that. It's the lack of weapons and the lack of the offensive line that the Eagles are that the Eagles don't have. You don't bench Carson Wentz if you're because if you bench Carson Wentz, that's signaling signaling that your season is over. You don't believe in your season anymore, and you want to and you're ready to quit. That's what benching Carson Wentz means. If you put in Jalen Hurts, you're pretty much you're pretty much over with. Because the Jalen Hurts would be the same situation. He wouldn't have the weapons. It's not like if you put Jalen Hurts in, oh my goodness, he has more accuracy. You know, he's better with the football. He has more weapons. All of a sudden, you put Jalen Hurts in. No, it's the same situation. You're putting him in the same situation as Carson Wentz is. So, no, you don't bench Carson Wentz yet because you're still on top of the NFC East, the worst division in football history. I don't think there's been a worse football. I don't think uh, any team has won... I don't think there's been this bad of a division since I I believe it was 1960. I saw it on ESPN this morning, so I don't think there's been that that bad of a division since then, which is crazy. So the Eagles they need to get their stuff together, but no, do not bench Carson Wentz because your season is not over. You still can manage to win this the win this division with five or six wins. I think that's what it's gonna take to win this division. So no, don't bench Carson Wentz. Yeah, Peterson shouldn't bench him. Uh, this podcast might actually be a lot faster than than it usually is because, you know, usually, like, Monday is on the other side. 
you know, debating with me. So that's why it, it takes longer. But, you know, it's just me. It'll probably be like yesterday. They, they might actually let me upload this onto YouTube now because, you know, they let me upload, they let me download shorter videos on here. And then there was only one time where Facebook let me download the video and post it onto YouTube. So if it's under... If it's under an hour, I believe, on Instagram, it lets me download it. But other than that, it doesn't let me do it. So maybe it'll be under an hour and I can uh, put it onto YouTube. So, yeah, I know a lot of people want me to stream on YouTube. The thing is, I'm waiting for to get more, you know, I'm waiting to get more, more devices that I can stream on. Right? But right now, I'm trying to post as much as as much of the podcast onto YouTube. Like, if I get the opportunity to post one of the podcasts onto YouTube, I will. But... Sometimes it just doesn't let me, it doesn't let me, it doesn't let me do it. So yeah, I just got to work with it. And you guys, like most of you guys are just going to have to come on Instagram and Facebook and just watch it from here. But, and I also post, post it on my Instagram feed afterwards. And I, that's actually something I was going to bring up. I think after this week, I'm just strictly just going to post it on IGTV. So it won't be on my feed anymore, even though you guys said to post it on my feed. It just takes up my whole feed. So what you guys are going to have to do, you guys are probably going to have to go to IGTV. And you guys are going to you know, have to rewatch the podcast from there, right? So I think that's what I'm going to do starting from next week. This week, I'll, you know, Thursday, Friday, today and for tomorrow, I'll, I will post uh, the the podcast onto my feed. But... Uh, for starting from next week, I might just post it onto IGTV strictly and just not post the you know the preview on my feed because you know it does it does take I think I have like twelve thirteen I I don't even know what episode this is at this point I'm starting to lose track but I have a lot of episodes of that's debatable on my feed I think you know I'm just gonna post it strictly on IGTV and the replays on face on my Facebook as well I could leave my Facebook in my bio of my um of my Instagram as well so. I can't do that as well. So anyway, back to this. Uh, these questions. Uh, so the Steelers and Ravens. They was moved to Sunday. So is this a big deal or no big deal for the Steelers? You know, I don't think it's a big deal for the Steelers because you know they're ten and zero. I mentioned it yesterday. They're ten and zero. They're undefeated. So no, I don't think it's a big deal because they're playing very well. You know, this might be a big deal for the Ravens, maybe. And, you know, uh, I heard maybe they might add a week 18 to play this game or play the games that, you know, have been postponed. So, may maybe. But, like, I also see this in a in a good way for the Steelers because the Ravens and Steelers is usually a very physical game. So, that's one less week of, you know, uh, torture on your body. Well, not torture on your body, but, like, physical abuse on your body. You know they're gonna be much. They're gonna be much. You know healthier. They're gonna be much uh, rested up for the next week. So I think this is a good thing for the Steelers, even though they were very mad about the situation. You know Juju Smith Schuster and those guys. Uh, you know uh, those guys. You know they went on to Claypool. Those guys. They went on to Twitter and you know they were sh telling people how they felt about the situation. I understand that. But, you know, I, I think they can take this into... I think they can take this and make it a positive because you get more time to rest. That, that's the positive thing about it. You get more time to rest. So, yeah, I think... I think this is a good thing for the Steelers. I don't think it's a big deal. They're 10 and 0. You know, they, they're they definitely going to make the playoff team. They could go 15 and 0. You know, that, that'll that beat... That'll still beat, uh, you know, the uh, Patriots back then. I think it was the Patriots. But... Yeah, because they went, I believe it was fourteen and zero. If they go fifteen and zero, they'll set a they'll set a record. I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, I think, uh, you know, this is not a big deal. It's not a big deal at all. No, no, not what I see. Um, yeah, this is gonna be a very lot shorter podcast because money's usually here with me. So no big deal for the Steelers that it's uh, postponed to Sunday. For the Ravens, it might be because they uh. They're, they're kind of struggling this season. They're fighting for that top spot. They're fighting for that playoff spot. I think they still will make the playoffs. But they, they're fighting for that top spot. And, you know, they want to get there. So this might be a big deal for the Ravens. It just might be. But, you know, they could come back. But, like, who knows? Their next game might be postponed. So that's that's very... Um, that's very... Um, you got to watch out for that. You got to watch out for that for real. Because... You know, four straight days they've had positive tests. 
which is very dangerous. So we, we, we have to see what happens with the Ravens. You know, I've seen Steelers fans on, you know, Twitter and stuff saying, oh, this, they're just scared to face the Steelers. And, you know, I'm a Steelers fan. I laugh at that. But in all seriousness, uh, you know, COVID, it, it's it's an issue. So you got to take care of that. you got to stay healthy. And, you know, I think it was a good, good idea postponing the game. I mean, obviously, we... Uh, for the Americans, it's Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, by the way, for the Americans. I got a special treat for you guys t later at the end of the show. So, happy Thanksgiving to you guys. But, um, you know, for the Americans' Thanksgiving, you guys could have gotten Steelers versus Ravens on Thanksgiving Day. Instead, you guys are getting the Cowboys versus the Washington football team. And then earlier, uh, you guys got the Texans versus the Lions. I believe the Texans won that game last time I checked the score they were winning. So, well, I mean, it's unfortunate, but... Hey man, you guys, you guys still got football. As long as you guys got football on Thanksgiving. Um. So, should the Lions apologize for hiring Matt Patricia? I don't, I don't think they should apologize for hiring Matt Patricia, even though Matt Patricia is doing a very terrible job. But this franchise has been, they've made the playoffs once, and I believe it was, was it thirty years that. 30 years, I believe it was, and they've made the playoffs once. That's how terrible this franchise is. You know, this franchise is terrible right now. It's been terrible for a while. Like I said, one time making the playoffs in 30 years. That is just absolutely terrible. I don't know if the, like, even the, you know, the Cowboys are bad, but to get that bad, it's, it's, it's terrible. So... There's nothing you you just need to add more weapons. You know the play calling obviously needs to be better for the Lions. You know I rarely watch Lions games because you know I just choose not to <laughs> because they're they're bad. But I there's no disrespect to the Lions. I have no hard feelings towards the Lions. You know they they still play football. They're still pro football players. But right now they're just terrible. And there's nothing there's nothing you know you could you could say about that. They're they're bad. So I think that. I don't think they should apologize for hiring Matt Patricia. I think Matt Patricia could get better as a coach, but you know this franchise they they need to add some something. They need to get that spark. If it's just one guy, they need to add somebody there, because obviously you know the sport's not like basketball. It's not like when you add one guy, oh you're all of a sudden a playoff team. This is a team sport. Like this is a real team sport. So no, I don't think they should uh, apologize for hiring Matt Patricia. Um, should, so sticking on the topic of the Lions, should Matthew Stafford, should Matthew Stafford request a trade? I think he should. I wouldn't want to play for that franchise right now because they're just terrible. Uh, like I said, the last discussion, they, they're terrible right now. So yeah, I think he should request a trade because they're not playing well. You know, I think he could play much better with a different team. So I think... This is not this is not the right spot for him. This is not the right place for him to play because he's not looking like the quarterback that I know he is and that I know he could play play as. So, yeah, he definitely should request a trade. He's just looking terrible right now because he's playing with a terrible team. He does he has terrible weapons, terrible offensive line, not great defense. So, yeah, he should. I think he should request a trade. He should want to get the hell out of there. And that that's just true. That's just facts, and there and nobody. I don't think I don't see how anybody could argue with that. He should. I if you want to play football, you want to play for a winning team. You want to win. That is your goal. Is to win. So I don't know. I don't think he has a skill set to bring this team back up after you know thirty years and wants to make it the playoffs. So you know I don't I don't think like he should request a trade. But I don't think he has the skill set to bring this team back up to the playoffs. I don't think he has the power of going up to a coach and be like, hey, we need to add these guys. I don't think he has that power. So I think he needs to go to another team, you know, where he'll be better. You know, maybe even a team like the Giants. I know they're bad right now. But maybe go to a team like the Giants, even though they have a decent quarterback right now. Go to a team like the Giants, maybe. Maybe you could help them. But right now, yeah, he should request a trade. He should have requested a trade back in... Uh, you know, when the trade deadline was coming up. So, yeah, he definitely should request a trade, without a doubt. Um, is Andy Dalton the most important player in today's game? 
No, I want to say he's the most important. I think it's Ezekiel Elliott because, like I said, he's been rushing for about a hundred yards. He's been playing. He's been playing great. But like I said, you need a great quarterback in order to be a great running back or a receiver, right? So you need to you need to have that guy with you to help you. You know. Get to the get to your spots, run the football well in order to get those hundred yards. And I think Andy Dalton's doing a pretty darn good job. As much as I hate the Cowboys, like I said, I hate the cow. I hate the fans. I hate the Cowboys fans. I can't stand them when I see one. So, but however, I do, I think Ezekiel Elliott is the most important player in this game, not Andy Dalton. Even though Andy Dalton's you know coming back from injury now, you know, but Ezekiel Elliott, he's he's the last star player of that team right now. That that and I don't know how you could argue with that. He's the last star player there, because Dak Prescott's gone. You know those guys, Most of these guys are either tested positive for COVID or injured, right? So this that's that's um that's just true, man. Like they have one final star there. Dak Prescott's out. These guys are out. Andy Dalton's gonna have to play well for the rest of the season. I hope uh, Dak Prescott has a f speedy recovery because that was a that was a grueling injury to watch, man. It was it was a terrible injury to watch. I hate watching injuries like that. I hate people going down like that, you know. But I think that Ezekiel Elliott is the most important player to watch in this game today. I would say tonight, but it's a, a in eight minutes the game starts, so he's the most important player to watch though. Um, was Brian Flores wrong for the benching of Tua? I think he was. I think he was wrong, and that and here's here's why. It's because Tua he's still a rookie. I mentioned this yesterday, I, th I believe as well. Let him suffer the consequences. Let him learn. If you take him out and diaper him and baby him, he's not going to learn. He's not going to develop into that great quarterback that you want him to develop into. He wasn't even playing that bad. He was completing about 55. He was only completing about 55% of his passes. You know, he was playing good. He he didn't have uh, that much, you know, his QBR wasn't that high in that game. But he wasn't playing that bad it, to the point where you had to bench him. I know we've seen star quarterbacks get benched before. But he didn't deserve to get benched. Putting in Ryan Fitzpatrick was just disrespectful to Tua. He's a rookie. He's going to learn. If you took the loss, so what? He learns from lot. You're gonna learn from losses. I don't think babying him and diapering him is gonna it's gonna help. I think that you should have kept him in the game. Let him learn. Let him suffer the consequences. Because that babying him is not gonna take you anywhere. Babying him is not gonna take him anywhere. So he should uh, you know. So he should have kept him in the game. Brian Flores should have kept him in the game because, like I said, he wasn't playing. He was completing fifty percent passes. You know, he looked good. He looked good to me. If I'm the coach, I'm not taking him out. I'm not taking him out, even though he's playing a bad game. He was going up against a tough defense, so that's that. It's tough to go up against a tough defense like that. So you shouldn't have benched him. You you can't keep babying him like this because it's not gonna work out in the end of the day. Because he's he's a rookie still. He has a lot to learn. Babying him is not the way to go. It's not the way to go. I think Brian Flores was completely 110% wrong for the benching of Tua. I didn't like it at all. I didn't like it in the moment. I didn't like it after the game. And I still don't like it now. So I don't, I don't think he should do that again. Let him learn from his losses. Let him suffer the consequences. That's all I have to say. I, I didn't like the benching of Tua. Um, yeah, and and he only threw he only threw for ninety three yards. So and you know, if they have upcoming games against the Bengals and the Jets, if they lose those games, we shouldn't even talk about the Miami Dolphins being a playoff team. That's real. That you can we shouldn't even talk about them being a playoff team if they can't beat the Bengals and the Jets and the Bengals without Joe Burrow. If they, you know, if they had Joe Burrow, eh, maybe, but they don't even have Joe Burrow. And the Jets, they're zero ten right now. We know how bad they are right now. We know how bad they were. So they're very bad right now. Those are two not very good teams. So if they lose to those teams, especially two in a row, that is tough. And I don't think you can come back from that. I don't think we should consider them a playoff team if they lose to those teams. But you know, I think the benching of Tua was wrong. Uh, can Curry lead the Warriors to the finals without Clay? I think he can, 
and I'm not saying he, I'm not saying he will though. So, cause look, there is no championship without Clay Thompson. They're the best shooting backcourts known to since mankind. The NBA started what was it like 196? It started about 40 years ago, right? It started a long, long time ago. Since then, there is not a single backcourt that has a has better shooting than these two right here. Steph and Clay are the best shooting backcourt in NBA history. And I mean from the day the NBA started to today. There has never been a better shooting backcourt than Steph and Clay. And that that's real. There's there's no I don't care who I can debate all day. I would love to someone for someone to compete and for someone to bring up and for someone to challenge me and tell me that there was a better shooting backcourt than Steph and Clay. I would love for somebody to tell me a better shooting backcourt than Steph and Clay because I guarantee you you will lose that debate to anybody because Steph and Clay, I love watching these guys play. I love watching these guys play. There's no other shooting better shooting backcourt than these two. So, yeah, no better shooting backcourt. So, to answer the question, yes, yeah, Steph Curry can. He can take them to the finals because, you know, you have Kelly. You added Kelly Oubre, who's a big pickup. You know, very athletic. He's, you know, he's long. You know, he get, he's very athletic, you know, he and he can't hit threes. He, he shoots about, I believe, 30... 30 to 40 percent from the three you know you have andrew wiggins who's a who's a bucket getter he can he can drop about 20 20 points per game you know jordan Poole coming off the bench we saw what he did you know he had a couple he hit a few threes you know he he's pretty decent as well you know and you have draymond green whose iq is very good no matter how people feel about him no matter how money feels about him uh he has a great iq of the game and he's he's a great defender, you know. He's he's a bit questionable on offense, you know, shooting threes, but in terms of defense, that he he's a great player. And then you have a seven foot one James Wiseman, who's very athletic. He can hit mid ranges, and that's going to be a perfect addition to with Steph Curry and those guys. So even without Klay Thompson, I think they can make the finals. I'm not saying they will because I think uh, behind the Lakers, the Lakers are my favorites right now. The Lakers are, I don't think anybody is better than Lakers right now. And behind the Lakers, I have the Clippers. So, but I, I'm, I wouldn't sleep on Steph Curry and the Warriors. I am not sleeping on, I'm not sleeping on the Golden State Warriors because Steph Curry is the greatest shooter ever. Ever. I don't maybe maybe there's a bit better sh uh, spot up shooters but in terms of just shooting you know he can shoot from anywhere from the right side from the left side from the corner it doesn't matter he, he'll he shoot from anywhere so I think you know you shouldn't sleep on the Golden State Warriors because they they're they're a good team Kelly Oubre good pickup James Wiseman great pickup Draymond Green you know these guys they're good players so their bench might be a little bit questionable, but in terms of the starting lineup, it's not a bad starting lineup. So, yeah, it's not a bad starting lineup. So I, I definitely think they can make it to the finals. I think he can will them to the finals, but it don't be surprised if they do. Don't be surprised if they do, but don't be surprised if they don't as well because I think there's a lot of other teams in the West because the West is stacked right now, there's gonna be teams that will probably knock them out of the, knock them out of the playoffs. Um, who is better right now, Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes? This is pretty an obvious question. It's Patrick Mahomes. Career wise, maybe Tom Brady, but right now it's Patrick Mahomes. Nobody is on the level of Patrick Mahomes right now. He's the best quarterback in football right now. He and in order to look like the best quarterback in football right now, you have to have the best weapons. He has Tyreek Hill. He has Travis Kelsey, who proved that why he's the best tight end in football last week. You know, these guys are very good. Patrick Mahomes has the people he needs. And so, I think Patrick Mahomes, he's better than Tom Brady right now. He's better than Aaron Rodgers right now. And I, I love watching Aaron Rodgers play. He's better than every single, he's better than every quarterback in the league right now. So, um, yeah, Patrick Mahomes, there's, no other, there's nothing else to say. Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the league right now and nobody is gonna nobody's better than him i have the kansas city chiefs as my favorites right now and that's like you can't have anybody else 
as your favorites right now. I mean, the Steelers, I'm a Steelers fan. You know, I, I would like to see the Steelers win. But right now, I need to see them against the Chiefs because uh, it's the Chiefs, they, they just have a powerful team. Even though they have one loss on the record, they barely beat. And even though they were number two on my top five list after week 11, I think the Chiefs are still the favorites to win it all this year. I think they could go back to back. I wouldn't be surprised if they do. So, yeah, I think best quarterback right now, without a doubt, is Patrick Mahomes. Better than Tom Brady right now. And that's no disrespect to Tom Brady. Um, so quickly, before, because I, I think the game just started. Who wins? Um, I'm taking, between the Cowboys and Washington, I got to take Cowboys. Uh, because Washington is so bad, they're, uh, they don't even have a name. They don't even have a name. They're called the Washington football team. I mentioned it. I mentioned it all the time. They don't even have a name. So the Cowboys, they have to win this game. And if they lose this game, it'll be very embarrassing. It will be very embarrassing if the, if the Cowboys lose this game. Because if, if they lose, I'm going to laugh. Because I hate Cowboy fans. I can't stand them. And whenever I see a Cowboy fan, I want to vomit. They're, they're terrible. So they're worse than any any fans in sports history so uh the cowboys even though i hate their fans i've no disrespect against the franchise itself but in terms of the fans i hate them so i think the cowboys should win this game against the washington not the redskins anymore the washington football team remember that they're so bad they don't even have, have a name they didn't go with you know washington dc or the washington warriors or something like that so uh, the Cowboys should have won this game. Most important player is Ezekiel Elliott, not Andy Dalton. So, yeah. Um, bit of a shorter podcast today. Um, I know I have some American viewers as well. So, happy Thanksgiving to uh, you guys. Um, oh, there's one more question. Uh, so, the Cowboys and Lions, they're so bad. So, I, got, I have a question. Should Cowboys and Lions continue to play on Thanksgiving? No. No, they shouldn't. Uh, they're so bad. Uh, I feel bad for the Americans that watch them. That what the I feel bad for the Americans that watch the that have to watch these guys play on Thanksgiving. They are so terrible. They shouldn't even be playing on on Thanksgiving. They should be just playing any other day but Thanksgiving and just for the Americans because I feel bad for the Americans. You have to sit on Thanksgiving Day and watch the Cowboys play. It's it's torture. I would never be able to do it because that it's just pure it's pure torture. I I can never do it. And as for the Lions, they've made the playoffs once in thirty years, so that just goes to wrap up their franchise pretty much. So no, I don't think either of them should be playing on the on Thanksgiving Day. You know we were supposed to get the Steelers versus Ravens today, but you know it was postponed. But anyway, uh that 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 might actually just wrap up the podcast today. Because, you know, a bit of a short podcast because Malib's not here today. Uh, it was only half an hour. I think this is the shortest one yet. I think my other shortest one was 40 minutes. But, yeah, this one's a bit shorter today because it was just me today. But, you know, I you know I talked about everything pretty pretty long. But, you know, it's usually the show's usually longer because Malib's here. And we usually go back and forth debating. So, yeah. Um... Yeah, that's going to wrap it up today. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. Like I said, starting from next week. So tomorrow I will. I'll post it on my feed. But starting from next week, I won't be posting the it onto my feed anymore. I'll just be posting it strictly on IGTV. So, yeah, I think that's uh that's what I'm going to do for now. Because it is, it's like completely... I want, once I hit 50 followers on the That's Debatable Instagram... The official that's debatable Instagram. It's called that's debatable twenty twenty. Uh, it's in my it's in the it's in my bio. So <clears throat> go follow that. And once we hit fifty followers over there, we will be uh, you know doing the podcast over on that Instagram instead of this one. And you know we'll post like we'll post all the we'll post all the um, the podcast onto that onto that Instagram once we hit fifty followers. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you guys on the next, uh, tomorrow. Monday should be back. He should be back tomorrow. He should be. Uh, he just gonna make it today and yesterday. So, uh, bit of a shorter podcast today and yesterday as well. So, yeah, like I said, it's usually longer because Monday's here and we go back and forth. 
But, you know, the past two days, you know, he hasn't been here. So I have no one to go back and forth with. You know, maybe maybe another day when uh, he, he tells me he's not here, I'll probably have one of you guys on here and, you know, debate with you guys back and forth. So uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. It's Friday. That means everyone i'll i'll put a poll up on my story to ask for you guys to ask questions so that's what i'm gonna do that's what i do every friday so yeah hope you guys enjoyed this uh podcast and i'll see you guys tomorrow if instagram lets me end the video <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs>